Get back here, you bitch! Nice tripping. He tripped over the curb! <laughs> that was pretty cool. He actually tripped over the curb. Excuse me. Victim's house. Alright, let's start here. Letter from victim's friend. I suggest a romantic lunch in the Palais Royal. A daytime... Tete a tete? Shut the fuck up, I'm reading! There's always... See, I can do it too. It's always French and in fresh, excuse me, not French, and invigorating. Meet her at the her at the park, just as a solar cannon is to fire. That would surely be an exciting start to any rendezvous, Jean Claude. I'm sorry if I offended any French viewers with my, you know, offensive French, but it's just, it's all in good fun, it's just a joke. Letter from victim's father. Oh. I admonish you, dear son, it is no virtue to simply proceed as if all will be well. Unless we all work behind the scenes as best we can, the monarchy will never be reinstated and the entire country will drift into fractious civil wars. The loving father. I know, right? Shut up, I'm doing something else. Honoring Sang... No, Sang... No idea. Neighbor. Can't understand that the victim was a pleasant man. This guy... He could have had enemies. Looks like he had some secret work going on. Three guesses as to what it could potentially be. Hello, madam. You're looking lovely today. Am I, th am I talking to you? No, I'm not. All right, never mind. Fuck you. Competition handbill. Scientific competition. The Academy of Sciences announces a patriotic competition. The winner shall be that chemist who demonstrates a workable method of increasing the stability of explosive powders. <laughs> the winning method will be used in service or the valorous. Oh, yes, valor. Armies of the Republic. Oh shit. Entrance must apply to Prefect Citizen Junot at the Collège des Quatre Nations. Something. The winner will be announced the 18th of Vendemaire, year two. Would you all shut the fuck up? I'm trying to read shit. Is that it? No, I'm still missing a clue. Right here. Okay. Threatening letter. Just remember, Alexander, that if I were ever to discover or even suspect that you were seeing someone else, I would not take it well. Be warned, then. My love for you is strong. That's strong. Pauline. Okay. Well, Pauline and Ariane and Alexander love triangle. Okay. Yeah, it's just... Okay. Um, uh, that's it for here. Not as exciting as I was hoping, but, uh, let's see. Oh! Leave the man alone! Or you can calm down now, they're dead. You're welcome. Moi plaisir. I ran right past it. Fuck me! Okay, Academy. What do we got here? Four clues. Two over there. Uh. Three. Okay, or am I just talking to people here? I don't see- oh, right next to you. Okay, well, I'll talk to you first. Good morning, citizen. Institute clerk. I'm afraid that we cannot accept any more entries into the contest. However, you can still make a monetary pledge to the revolutionary cause. Just sign here. Oh, is that what that is? Oh, Junot, that's you. Overseer scientific contest. All entrants to contest have been set. Okay. Well, I'd love to read the letter and not talk to you. There we go. List of competitors. Official contenders for the gunpowder formula competition. Antoine Laurent de Lavoisier. 13 Rue de la... Uh, Gaspard Mong. <laughs> Comte de Peru, 21 Galerie de Montpens... Montpensier, Palais Royal. Colonel Cha Charles-Louis Loud de, de Froloir. Good God. 48 Avenue de Lutesse, Robert Rousseau, 3 Galerie de Valois, Palais Royal. Charles, oh, Froloir, My time is much too important to answer impertinent questions. Address yourself to my aide de camp. A man is dead, you prick. Maybe you'd like to come take a look at him. And then maybe you won't feel it's so impertinent anymore. All right, I assume that's you, secretary. Aide to Colonel Froloir. Whoever you are. Take care to speak to Citizen de Froloir with the greatest respect. Ah, fuck him. He's a veteran of the Corsican campaign. 
and his military prowess is only matched by his scientific expertise in chemistry and ballistics. Oh, oh, is that a show? Well, he's an asshole. If he's an asshole, I'm gonna be an asshole right back. Hippolyte Ojam, good god, secretary, claims Froa is the veteran of the Corsican campaign, claims Froa is an expert in chemistry and ballistics. Well, I don't like you, and you have the chemical background, so you're indeed suspicious, sir. Alright, that's all here at the academy. I guess I'm going to the clockmaker next. Alright, so let's go see Mr. Rousseau, who made the solar cannon, shall we? That'll be exciting. Pardon me, excuse me, oh my god. Traffic jam, out of the way, excuse me. Oh, literally, traffic jam. <laughs> I, I was just making a joke. Turned out to actually be funny. Okay, uh, right here. Hello, are you Rousseau? Aha! And all the screaming. I'm the inventor of that cannon, you know. I know. Quite ingenious, I think. Unfortunate business, the killing, but it will bring attention to my invention. Of course, isn't that all we care about? No such thing as bad publicity, eh? <laughs> I don't believe in that, but whatever. Robert Rousseau, inventor, invented the solar cannon, did not seem very upset by the killing. And he uses a cane. Oh. Maybe he did it on purpose, in order to bring attention to his invention. <gasps> Solar cannon of the, of the Pedic Royale. I've already read about this. Designed by in 1786 by watchmaker and inventor Robert Rousseau. Or I guess it's Robert Rousseau. The solar cannon allowed strollers at the Palais Royale to adjust their timepieces. When the sun reached the meridian, a magnifying glass was arranged so that the sun's rays would direct be directed to the touch hole of a small cannon. At noon precisely, it went off with a bang and restored cannon works up to this day. Oh! Wait, is this it? Are, are you the only clue here? You are. Okay, I got to talk to Rousseau. That's cool. Okay, now the fifth is over here. Café Février. Um, table by the window. To talk to the guy who loads the cannon every day. Am I going the right way? I am not. It's this way. Alright, here we go. Four clues. We'll start with you. Hello. Damn it. I missed the old thing. Server. Nah. Otherwise, today pretty much like any other. <laughs> Unless you count the old colonel who come living in early this morning, had a coffee with a sergeant. They seem like old pals. Sergeant? For what? Server cafe, day exactly like any other, with exception of limping veteran who had coffee with Saint Brie. Seemed like old friends. Well, Saint Brie. Saint Brie is here, isn't he? Guy Nanjing. The only time I've seen someone sitting with a sergeant over there. As it happens, I recognize the man. I served under him as a fusilier. Colonel de Brolois. I knew it. As it happens, I think I know the man from the army days. I don't recall the name, but I believe he became a scientist of some sort. He may actually work at the Collège de Quatre Nations. Quatre. Okay. So I guess that's how you say four or fourteen. No. Quatre is four, I think. Statement of cafe customer. Fuck, I missed it. Alright, let's go ahead and look it up. Comes here often. Saw saint -Brie talking to someone- saint -Brie talking to someone he recognized from his army days. Didn't know name, but believes the man became a scientist at the College de Quatre Nations. Wait, he says he didn't know his name. He just said it was Froid. Let me talk to you again. I may have misheard. You may actually work at the College de Quatre Nations. You may actually work at the I don't get to hear the rest? Okay, well, fuck you. Saint Brie, Saint Brie, Brie. There you are. I am Sergeant Saint Brie, veteran of the Corsican campaign, and I don't take kindly to jokes, young man. It is my honor and duty to load that damn solar contraption every damn morning. I load it with scraps of paper. Paper! Couldn't hurt a child. The day was a day like any other. Now, leave me alone. Okay, so he loads it with paper. Wouldn't hurt anyone. But Frolois was sitting with you, if I interpreted what the customer said to me correctly. I'm gonna go back and re-watch this while editing, and I'm gonna kick myself if I'm wrong. Box of military-grade blank cartridges. Uh-huh. 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 Well, perhaps you didn't have anything to gain from it, but Froloa definitely did. 
because they were in the same competition, he wanted to win. He wanted the recognition of having his chemical materials used by the by the army. Loads the solar cannon each morning with blanks. Veteran, of course, can campaign. I thought he said he loaded it with paper. Is that the same thing? Maybe those are cartridges of paper. Oh, pardon me. I didn't actually ask Arno to do that. I'm sorry. I can't. I, I do my best to rein him in, but sometimes it gets away from me. Um. Military grade blank cartridges. You said you filled them with paper. Seems to be some inconsistencies here. I still have one more location to go to. Though I don't know where it is. Apologies, everyone. May have cheated a little bit, but apparently there's a laboratory right above Russo's office. Um, I don't know the answer to the murder mystery. I didn't scroll down far enough. I just looked up um, wh what the sixth location is and where, where it is. So, it's above... Oh, right there, in that window. Okay. Maybe this is a type of, like, secret location, because a couple of the murder mysteries have had those. And they're freaking annoying. What the fuck just happened? Did the gun just... I think the cannon just went off! Oh, I missed it! Shit! Oh, that would've been so cool to see! God damn it. Alright, here we go. Laboratory. There's a skull on the desk. And this place is completely trashed. Six clues. Okay. Um, wow. I guess... Oh, start with the desk. With the skull. To be or not to be? That is the question. Beakers, scales, thermometers, distillation supplies, various compounds, etc. Scientific apparatus. Okay, so this is where he did all his stuff. All of his experiments. Competition handbill. The Academy of Sciences announces a patriotic competition. What shall be the chemist who demonstrates a wonderful method of increasing the stability of his host powers? Armies of the Republic. Yeah, this is the exact same one that um, the guy had in his office. Alexander had in his office. Huh. Okay. But whose laboratory is this? Is this his? I wouldn't- No, because his house is back there. I don't know. The front cover is inscribed Gaspard Mong. The Monge? Mong? Mange? No idea. The book is full of scribbled formulas. At the bottom of the page, one, uh, one, one of the pages, it's written, I believe I have the answer. The prize shall certainly be mine. That looks like a lot of potential gunpowder. Silver rocks marked elemental potassium. Huh. I just heard a meow. There's a kitty! Hi, kitty, kitty. How are you? Um, container of silver rocks. Elemental potassium. Potassium water reaction. Alright, let's go ahead and read. Until the 18th century, no distinction had been made between potassium and sodium. Only with the experiments of Humphrey Davy following from Lavoisier was elemental potassium finally isolated. When combined with water, potassium forms potassium hydroxide, resulting in a violent explosive reaction. Oh, I was looking at the vials, not the damn barrels. Okay, several barrels labeled water directly above the table. Oh, shiza. I don't see any sign right above the table. Oh, well. Barrels. Yeah, okay. Always review the evidence. So, I'm still missing one. One clue. Oh, oh, what the hell is this? The large pane has a crack of huge concentric circles. At the center is an embedded military grade projectile which appears to have been fired from the gardens below. <gasps> However, it failed to completely pierce the window. So that's when the cannon went off. Oh my god! be Frolois. He's the only one who fits that description. And he's an army guy, so he would have access to the cartridges. He's in the freaking chemical competition, so he knows how all this shit works. I'm thinking he broke in to Gaspard's thing. I, I, I don't know. It went up into his office. I wanna... Mm, I don't know. 
I, wa I really want to go accuse Frodo Here we go. Okay, he's over here. I'm gonna go ahead and accuse him. Um, he's the only one that seems to fit. Someone that a customer recognized from his army days. He even mentioned Frodo name to me. Um, sat with Sampli, the guy who loads the freaking cannon. Now Sampli, Sampli, I can't say that without like extra emphasis. Um, Sandri usually loads the cannon every day with nothing but paper, but he had freaking military cartridges next to him. Now, a sergeant would certainly have access to that and know how they work. Plus, he entered into the chemical competition, so he knows how chemicals work. He would, he would be able to set that up, right? So, it seems to fit. So, I'm gonna go with my gut and I'm gonna go do it. I reviewed most of the evidence, and, uh... This is where it's taking me, so I'm gonna go with my gut. I will not second guess my personal judgment, and I believe I it's you. Not too important to answer impertinent questions. Address yourself to my aide de camp. Yeah, and he dodges my questions by referring me to his, by playing the pompous dick bag. So yeah, I think it's you. Quadun. I only thought was to disrupt an experiment. Oh. Just look at how ingenious was my plot. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah! I did it! Oh, my God. That was the last murder mystery, I believe. Um, and ah, I did it! No false accusations. How many, how many murder mysteries did I do where I actually accused people wrongly? I think three at the most, but I'm thinking two. The, the decapitated warden. I missed a couple there. And then the poisoning in the garden of the woman that nobody liked. I forget what one, I forget, forget what that one was called. Um, something about coffee, but um, yeah. So though I think those are the two I'm thinking of right now where I accuse people falsely. Uh, there might have been more, but hey! You already said this, bro. Just look at how ingenious was my plot. Absolutely ingenious that you didn't even consider that someone might get hurt by loading that thing with actual like. Oh my god. Yeah. So ingenious. Criminally reckless. Absolutely ingenious. Idiot. Dickhead. Chief of police. La parent. De la parent. Excuse me. I, um, uh, believe that's it. Any fool could have figured that one out, I imagine. Oh, Still, fuck you. Take a weapon if you like. You can get your fat ass out of that chair and do it yourself if you want. Yeah! 500 livres. I got Yes! Okay, I liked that one. That one was cool. Revolved around an actual historical, uh, landmark. I mean, Palais Royal in the, the noontime canon. But, uh, yeah. Very cool. And I got the blunderbuss. I'm gonna have to equip that, but let's see. Case summary. In an effort to improve the manufacture of gunpowder needed by the Revolutionary Army, the Academy of Sciences began a competition. Gaspard Mong is the favorite to win it. Colonel Farwa, jealous of his competitor Mong, reunites with an old army... Comrade? I'm just gonna say comrade. Sergeant Sampri, who loads the solar cannon daily. Frolois has released, realized that Mong's laboratory... I'm just saying Mong. It's probably wrong. But, uh... Frolois has realized that Mong's laboratory looks out over the Palais Royal Gardens and has discerned that Mong has dangerously stored casks, casks of water directly above his vials of elemental potassium. Frolois, as an ex-soldier, knows his ammunition, and he swaps a live round for the blank that Sampri normally uses. Okay. He then limps to the solar cannon in the dead of night and aims it at his rival's laboratory window. When the cannon goes off, the live round will pierce the window, knock the water onto the potassium, and the resulting explosion will permanently disrupt Mong's experiments. Oh, wow. That That is... Okay. That's pretty ingenious. Um, I I didn't even think of that. <laughs> and I, I still got it, but I had no idea. That I, I didn't even think of that. However, Frodoa did not anticipate an innocent passerby, Alexander Loisac, arriving directly in front of the cannon for his noontime rendezvous. Alas, Alexander was killed, and the projectile, slowed by its journey through Alexander's chest, failed to pierce Mong's window. Clever scheme foiled, an innocent man killed. Alright, I'll give you that. I'll give you that, Frolois. That, that, that was pretty clever. But, uh, stupid. <laughs> I'm gonna get it.
show. 